everyone. So I'm here at the Computer History Museum in Silicon Valley, California. And what a really great location this is to start off my very first video of 2018. Today I'm going to show you how to write your own method and then how to create a taxi object to call it. So I've opened Python Easter and the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new file using the game slash animation template. So new menu, scroll down a little bit, press on game slash animation and then give your code a name. I'm going to call this one timer demo because I'd like to show you how to create a method that's custom and then we're going to test that method and then I'm going to show you how to use an action as a timer. So you can run this method every second, you can run this method every half second, you can run this method every five seconds, or whatever you choose to do. So here we are in a game slash animation template, and as you can see, it comes with six methods in the class already. Setup, did change size, update, and then the three touch methods. Just because these are the ones that it comes with in the template, doesn't mean we can't add ones of our own. So I'm going to add our new custom method right underneath the setup method and I'm going to call it spawn item. Since it's a method and it belongs to a class, you actually need to put the self in the brackets like that. So what do we actually want to do when we spawn an item? Well, we want to create a new sprite node. So I'm going to create a new sprite node object like this. Now I'm going to randomize the image that it's based off. So for that, I'm going to do some code in setup. In the setup, I'm going to create something which I'm going to call image list and it's an attribute of the scene which means that it has self dot in front of it so this list contains images so I'm just going to go and pick out three emojis to use I'm going to use the alien monster I'm going to use the cactus and one more. Circus tent, the good old circus tent. All right, so getting back to our spawn item method, what I want to do is I want to create a new item, a new sprite node that uses a random choice out of that image list. So to do that, I'm going to type in random.choice and some brackets. And inside of those brackets, I need to put in the name of the list that it's going to choose one item from. So the name of the list is called self.image underscore list. That means every time we create a new item using this method, it's going to choose out of alien monster, cactus or circus tent. So after we've created the sprite node, we need to define two numbers for its position on the screen because I want it to be random. So let's make up a random x. So the random x is going to be a random integer. So randint gives you a random whole number. And the starting x and the ending x the starting x is going to be 0, and the ending x is going to be get screen size. And then you can either use index notation or you can use dot notation, and you can grab the width of the screen like this. Or you can put square brackets and then 0. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and create a new random y value. So 
So this time it's going to use the height of the screen and that's going to give us a random X and a random Y anywhere on the screen. The next step is to set the position of our new item using the random X and the random Y. So we pick up the new item sprite node and then we, we access the position attribute by using dot position. And then I'm going to set it to random X and random Y. After that, we've created our sprite node, we've set its position using those two numbers that we've just created. And then lastly, we need to add it to the screen. So remember self in this context, because we're working within a scene, the self refers to the scene. So we're going to add, we're going to use add child to add our new item to the scene. So we've done a little bit of code now and I don't know if it works yet. So how do I test that? So I'm going to run this method once. So I'm going to call this method once from the setup just to make sure it works. So to call it, I can just type in self.spawnItem and some brackets at the end and then I'm going to run it and I got a cactus, that's good. So I'm just going to put a hash in front of that one to comment it out. I might need it a little bit later on for more testing, so I'll just leave it there. So there you go, you've created your own spawn item custom method. You've verified that it works. Now we need to have some way of triggering it to run over and over and over again. So this video is called Timer. So we need to make sure this block of code can run every one second. So let's go and do that now. Inside of Apple's SpriteKit technology and inside of Python Eastern now, you've got these things called actions. And basically actions are used to tell an object to go and animate something. But they can also be used to call a method and so we're going to use actions in the context of a timer, not so much an animation. So here we go. The first thing you need to do is define a new action object. So I'm just going to call it timer action. Notice I'm not using self dot in front of this because I only need to define what it is and then tell it to run it. I don't need to change that object after that. So how do you create an action object. Well, up the top here in line number five, you can see that you've got a equals action. And that means instead of typing action all the time, I can just type the capital letter A and it will mean the same thing. All right, so our time action needs to consist of a repeat forever. Now, I've used the repeat forever action constructor before. And I've found that on some people's iPads, it doesn't work quite right. It basically can't find that constructor. So instead, I'm going to use the repeat action and then specify a zero for how many times to repeat. So let's go and create a repeat object right now. So we, we type in a.repeat. And then I'm going to leave some space here, and then a comma, and then a zero. So the zero means it's going to repeat forever. If you put in a five there, then this will just repeat five times. If you put in a ten in there, then it'll repeat ten times. If you put a zero, that means it's going to repeat forever. Now, you can stop it later on if you want, or pause it but it'll just keep running forever. So what is the thing that we actually want to run forever? Well, there's two things that we want to do. The first thing is we want to call the spawn item method 
The second thing is we want to put a delay in there or a wait of one second. So to put in multiple things in there, we need to have an action sequence. So I'm going to put in action sequence like this, a dot sequence. And an action sequence is basically one thing starts and then as soon as that thing is finished, the second thing starts. And then as soon as that thing is finished, the third thing starts. You can put as many things as you want inside of a sequence, but we only need two. We need the calling of the spawn item method and then we need the wait. So the, the calling of the spawn item method looks like this. So a.call and inside of these brackets we need to type in self.spawn item. Now it's important to note here that I'm not putting any left and right brackets after the spawn item because that would be running that method in line 11 which we don't want. We basically want to tell that a.call object that we're creating that that code block is what we want to run. We don't want to run it right now, we want to, we want to tell it that we want to run it later. And that will allow it to be run over and over again. So after the a.call, you need to press right and put a comma in. And then we need to write in the final piece of our code. So after the a.call, we need an a.wait. And in the brackets for that, you can just put in the number of seconds that you want it to wait. Be careful because my line number 11 has wrapped onto the next line. So if you're coding at home, just make sure you keep that all on the same line. So now what we've built up is something that repeats forever that consists of two things over and over again. Calling the spawn item method and waiting. Calling the spawn item method and then waiting. And it will just keep going over and over again. So we've created the timer action object. How do we actually run it? Well, actions are attached to nodes. And the scene is actually a node itself. So we can just do self.run action, timer action, and the scene is going to basically keep running this over and over and over again. Hit play and it should work. So now, when we hit play, we should get a new random emoji out of alien monster, cactus, or circus tent in a random spot on the screen, and it should happen every one second. So this is a really useful way of using actions to call methods, and since I've been using actions more and more lately, this is just a very clean and nice way to do it. And you don't have to worry about frame counters and frame counters that interfere with other ones if you want to reuse them. Yeah, this method works really well. So give it a go and see what you can come up with. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thanks for watching everyone. I thought I'd just quickly mention the inspiration that made me make this next video. So a big thank you to my students that have been really encouraging and convinced me to make this video. Also a big thank you to my YouTube subscribers, particularly those ones that have left really nice comments and you know, when are you making your next video? When's the next video coming out? I really enjoy them. So thanks for the positive comments. Also, thanks to my Twitter followers and the nice messages that I've received on there as well. So thanks for watching and I hope to make more soon.